Hi, everybody. I'm Hillary Howard. It is beautiful outside, perfect September day with lots of sunshine. Oh, would you look at Washington, huh? I'm going outside today. Great forecast for you, and it's going to get even better. A perfect 10 today with sunny skies and low humidity. But other than that, it's kind of quiet around the country. We like quiet. heard nothing, was unaware what was about to happen because I was dressing to go down to Windows on the World to have a breakfast meeting with some tenants in the building. And then I would, after, after my breakfast meetings at Windows, I'd go downstairs to meet with other tenants. And that was my morning ritual in the six weeks between acquisition of the Twin Towers and the 9-11 event. It's something I'll never forget because of where we were in the life cycle of putting the New York Times building together. The New York Times obviously was front and center on uh, recording and memorializing the experiences of that day. Um, we all had uh, one of the low points in all of our um, lives that day, getting home and, and making sure that our family was safe. On September 11th, I was 17. I was just at the beginning of my senior year of high school in South Hamilton, Massachusetts. Um, and I think like everyone in that area who wasn't in New York City, it was almost just a sense of disbelief. And we were, I was in class, I think it was like going into math class and someone in the hallway, a teacher stopped me and said, oh my God, did you see? Uh, in fact, we've got some tape replay of that. Do we have the tape available right now? Here's the plate, here's the tape. You see the plane coming in from what looks like the east side and it blows into the building with the flames and the smoke billowing out the other side of the tower. It, it was surreal. It was so surreal. I clearly remember um, glued to the TV and then basically tried calling my mother, tried calling my sister, tried calling anyone. And for those of you that were there during the time, all, all cell phones were dead, all phones were dead. You couldn't get through to anyone. They sent everybody home um, because there were mass evacuations, right? And so a lot of my friends and my dad worked in big buildings in downtown Boston and every skyscraper, every tower was evacuated, I think across the country. So, um, so my dad was sent home and got home by like two o'clock. And so we just, everyone was home and I just remember sitting there and sitting with my dad and watching the news and trying to come to terms with what was happening. We own the, owned the hotel across the street from the World Trade Center, which today is owned by Goldman Sachs. It's a Conrad Hotel, but at the time, it was uh, an embassy suites and um, movie theater complex. And that became the morgue. And we gave the city uh, unfettered access to those buildings to provide them with uh, a space to bring bodies and uh, deal with family members grieving. On that morning, my wife says, you cannot go downtown. And I said, why not? She said, because I made an appointment for you with the dermatologist. Light colored hair, fair skin. The dermatologist is someone I visit on a continuing basis, constantly, right? She said, you canceled last month, you canceled the month before, and now she got upset and excited. And she said, you must go, you cannot go downtown. And at that point, we were married for only 45 years. And when your spouse, told me married for 45 years, gets upset and gets angry. I finally looked at her and said, okay, don't get angry, don't get upset. The words are yes, dear, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. She said, good, you're going to the dermatologist. She said, my life, 
and that's why I'm here talking to you today. Assume that uh, the next several days uh, will not witness much financial activity in New York or anywhere else in this country. And it comes at a time, of course, where the American economy was weakening as well. Uh, so again, the attacks will have a maximum impact, not just on loss of life, uh, not just politically, but, but economically as well. To make things worse, after 9-11, the stock market was halted and it reopened that following Monday and the stock market plummeted, sending the world and the US into a recession. It was one of the worst days in trading history for the S&P 500, for New York Stock Exchange, for the Dow Jones Industrial, Industrial Average. We think, we're, we think we're ready for it, for the opening of the stock exchange and uh, the mercantile exchange and some of the other businesses down there. And luckily, as it would have it, as you know, as it would be, I was graduating in the middle of a recession. And my industry, which was finance and real estate, was the focal point with the stock market plunging and the real estate being affected by 9-11. No one was hiring. I couldn't even get an interview. And really, that's when my father, you know, told me, get your broker's license and, or salesperson's license. And it was just like that. I had no options. With respect to the building, the New York Times building, the day after 9-11, we were called together with the New York Times and we didn't know if the project was going to move forward. And so we got together in the Eagle Room of the New York Times building and we met with the publisher and the leadership of the New York Times. And they said something really powerful and I'll never forget it. They said, we're moving forward with this project we're not re redesigning this project to become a fortress. We don't believe that anybody would want to live in a building that could withstand the, the attacks of 9-11. And we will build a building that is tr as transparent and as open and as democratic as our country and our company. First, the most important building that I ever built was seven. And I watched it come down on 9-11. It was the last building to come down on 9-11. And I watched it, and it was a horrendous feeling. We also lost four employees of Silverstein Properties, and that was, and they had, they were, they fathered eight children, and that was that was a horrendous experience. We saw something that was absolutely remarkable. We saw people coming down to the site from all over the country to help rescue, to help try to take out from the rubble people who were grievously injured and who would die if they weren't already dead. They would die if they weren't extricated. But watching that made me realize that the terrorists had brought down the Twin Towers plus seven. The terrors attacked not just the Twin Towers, they attacked our way of life. And it's something that just shook me. And I realized what was really necessary was to rebuild this place bigger and better than ever to show them, the terrorists, that they couldn't, they couldn't defeat us. That America was gonna come back bigger and stronger and better that New York would accomplish it. And that at the end of the day, we had to be resilient. We had to be determined. In order to do something of this magnitude, it took an enormity of effort and cooperation from thousands of people. And at the end of the day, I simply said, okay, this is something I agreed to do. America today is on bended knee in prayer for the people whose lives were lost here, for the workers who work here, for the families who mourn. This nation stands with the good people of New York City and New Jersey and Connecticut as we mourn the loss of thousands of our citizens. I can hear you!
I think resilience can be defined in many, many ways. Essentially, it's when you find yourself being knocked down, you get right back up again. You don't, you don't stay down there. You may feel defeated at one moment of time, but defeat is only as long as you were lasted to be defeated. At point, if, if again, if it's worth doing, if it's something that you have full faith in and feel it needs to be done, if it's meritorious, if it's rational, if it's going to affect, affect people in a very ma major way, positively, then go for it. Get right back up. Don't stop. Push ahead. Get it done. Uh, to be resilient is a characteristic a lot of great people uh, needed and need in order to strive and to be great and to be the best that they can possibly be. That key characteristic is the ability to bounce back after setback. And in life and in business and here in New York City, it's really setback after setback after setback. Um, one of the things uh, I hope um, to have in my long career is to be able to be unaffected too much uh, by all the losses and by the setbacks and by the sort of unexpected hurdles that we all have to go through.